What's up guys, today we're gonna to be looking at how you can edit those epic time-lapse sequences that you've already gone out and shot in the field with only Lightroom and Photoshop. Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be looking at how you can edit those time-lapse sequences that you've gone out and shot previously. Now, we already shot a video telling you how you can go out into the field and shoot these time-lapse sequences. Go ahead and check that out. I have it linked below. But if you have already seen that, this is gonna get you through the process of how you can actually edit those time-lapse sequences and get them in front of people's faces. And all you need to have is Lightroom and Photoshop to do this. A lot of people think that you have to get like this extreme other software that you have to learn to use and spend all this time to do it, but you can do everything in Lightroom and Photoshop. I'm gonna show you how right now. We're gonna go over to my computer screen and see exactly how to do this. All right guys, so the first thing that you're gonna do in Lightroom is load all your photographs in here. And Lightroom does a really good job of organizing everything. So I like to put everything in Lightroom first so I can see everything out in front of me in a nice grid view and make all the edits that I need to before I throw it over into Photoshop. This is the best way that I've found to do it. This is the best order that I've ever done it in. And, and this is the way that is really upped my time-lapse game in the past. Now, this is the time-lapse that we already shot in the previous video that's linked below that I already mentioned. But we're going to start editing these photographs near the end of the sequence. Well, why is that? Well, with this particular sequence, we need to think about where we're coming from and where we're ending up. Usually with sunrise shots, it starts really dark and as the light progresses, it gets much lighter. So I want the light at the end of this sequence to be perfect so that I have everything perfectly exposed in this sequence. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the very end of this sequence and I'm actually gonna start there with where we are. So here's the very last photograph that we actually have, 870 photographs in this sequence. Usually with time-lapse photography, it's gonna be like that. You're gonna have 600 you know, photographs that you have to go through and edit. Don't let that number intimidate you. You can easily edit all of these very quickly. I'm gonna show you how. You have to go into the develop module and we're just gonna make very simple edits to this photograph. I'm gonna bring the exposure down, contrast up to create a little more separation between blacks and whites. I'm gonna bring highlights a little bit down. Shadows, I'm gonna pull up to increase the exposure down here in the foreground of the time lapse. I'm gonna pull whites down a little bit, and then I'm gonna pull blacks barely up. Add some clarity to this to really bring out some attention to detail. Vibrance, of course, love vibrance in photographs and saturation as well, just a little bit. That's basically all I'm gonna do with this photograph. Now, in these photos, you see a lot of dots from dust either on my lens or on my sensor. You're going to be tempted to get those out with the spot removal tool in Lightroom. With time lapses, do not do that because how I'm gonna show you to edit these very quickly uh, is not going to turn out well for you if you m m use spot removal. Just because we're going to implement these changes to every single photograph in this sequence. If I use spot removal, like say I get the spot removal tool and I remove this spot right here, you just click and Lightroom will select this place to replace that spot with. What's going to happen is if I add these edits to every single photograph in the sequence, it's going to select different spots from each different photograph based on the exposure. So you're going to be able to tell there will be a circle jumping around with replacement spots in every single clip of the sequence. We don't want that because that's very distracting and doesn't look right. So I'm gonna hit Controller Command Z to undo that change and I'm gonna hit done because I'm not even using spot removal. So I'm pretty much done with this photograph. I'm gonna go back to library and double click so that I can see every photograph in the sequence. And here are the changes we made like from the last one to the second to last one. And what I'm gonna do is keep that one selected and I'm gonna scroll all the way up to the top. I'm gonna to hold down the shift key 
and click the very first photograph. And then what I'm going to do is go to sync settings. And sync settings brings up this whole panel of things that we've done. And what I'm going to do is leave all of these. You can, if, if all of these aren't selected, you can go to check all or check none and then automatically check what you want. I'm going to go to check all just because I know I didn't do any cropping or spot removal or anything like that. And I want to carry over every change that I made to every single photograph. And then I'm just going to hit synchronize. And what Lightroom is going to start to do is put the changes that we made of that last photograph into every other photograph of the sequence. So you can see these very first photographs that we took, photograph one, two, three, four, and so on, are extremely dark because of the changes that we made to that last image where we want the sequence to end up. So you can like scroll down through these and just make sure everything is okay where it ends up. You know, we have the right exposure, we have the right vibrance and saturation that we want. It looks pretty good to me. You know, making these fast edits is honestly the best way that I've found, especially with these that don't have a lot of like cloud detail going on within the sequence itself. So now that those are already rendering and finishing up, I'm going to select everything again. So I'm going to scroll up to the top select the first one scroll down to the bottom and select the last one and with those selected what i'm going to do is create a new folder in my desktop so i'm going to go create new folder and i'm just going to say time lapse i'll just do tl for short and i'm going to export all of my photos into that file so i'm going to go to file export and I'm going to reduce the size of these just for time's sake with this tutorial. So I'm going to go 2000 by 2000 pixels at a 200 resolution and um, select my destination. So I'm going to go to choose desktop and TL. Select folder. But before you actually export those, what you need to do, and this is very important, is be sure that you change the file names to each one of those photographs that you created. So you come up here to this tab called File Renaming. You're going to Rename To, and you can select the custom name and the sequence. You can do whatever you want. You just have to have the sequence in there. I like to do custom name dash sequence and I can just select TL and it'll automatically give me TL-1. Now you have to do this because it's going to count up and you need that numerical from one to whatever number your last photograph is to have that imported correctly in Photoshop. This is an extremely important step that you can't miss or it's not going to come over correctly in Photoshop. And then I'm just gonna hit export and wait for Lightroom to finish exporting all of those into that folder. And we're gonna use that folder to bring them over into Photoshop later. And I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead to that just because we're about to export 870 photographs and I know you don't want to sit through all that and just watch these click through one by one. So I'll see you over in Photoshop. All right, so when you get into Photoshop, you're going to completely ignore the screen. I know you're going to be tempted to go to create new, but don't do it. We're going to go to file and open. And it's going to bring up this dialog box here that we can choose files from. My file is in this TL folder. So I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to select only the first image. Again, only select the very first image. And then I'm going to select image sequence. It's this little box down here right to the left of the open box. And I'm going to select that. This is why we exported in a numerical sequence because now Photoshop knows to put these in order for us and then I'm going to click open so it opens all of these and it's going to bring up this box right here that asks us the frame rate in which we want this to show up. Now Photoshop has recognized that we're creating a time lapse here. So 
if you have something like 300 photos in your time-lapse sequence, you're going to select something like 30 frames per second. Mine's double that, 616 photos in this exported sequence that I did. So I'm actually going to select 60 frames per second. 30 frames per second, again, is if you have something like 300 to 400 photographs. 60 frames per second is going to be like 500 to 600 to 700, and that's going to put you right in the 10 second range for your time lapse sequence. I'm going to click OK there, and Photoshop is going to bring this in as a video group right here on the left side panel. Now, next thing you want to do is select your workspace. All you have to do is go to Window and come down here to Workspace. Usually you're gonna be in the default workspace, which is Essentials, but I'm going to come down here to Motion, and it's going to bring up this right here, this timeline for us, and then I'm also, before we get started, going to change some things up. So I'm going to go to Image, and I'm going to change the image size, but I'm not selecting image size. I'm actually changing the time-lapse sequence size. So instead of image size, I'm actually selecting canvas size, and that's going to change what we have. And I'm going to select pixels of what we're changing, and I'm going to change this to 1920 by 1080. And that's an HD size. I'm going to select OK, and it's going to come up here and say you need to do this. Some clipping will occur, and don't worry about that. Proceed, and it's just going to adjust your canvas size that you have here. All right, so we have our time-lapse sequence brought in, and we have this really cool uh, timeline down here that we can play with, and we can kind of scroll through and see exactly what our time-lapse looks like. And we do have those really nasty... Um, spots on the lens, the dust spots. Make sure your lenses are clean before you start shooting this. I was kind of in a rush, clearly a little bit tired from my early morning sunrise wake uh, and didn't clean off my lens and now I have all these dust spots on here. Be sure that you clean those off. You actually cannot use the clone stamping tool to get those away. Now, if you were to use them, you could hold down your Alt key and remove those with the clone stamp tool, but they're just going to show up. It does it frame by frame. So that's not going to be too helpful for you. What you do need to do is select the layer and convert that layer to a smart object. This is going to change your timeline down here and give you different options to transform your video. Now that we have it as a smart object, we can actually increase the size, decrease the size. So let's say you want one of those like zooming shots of your time-lapse sequence. You can just select this layer, come up to your transform controls and hold down your shift key. And let's zoom this in a little bit and then recenter this and let's do like a panning out effect that we have here. All you have to do is go to the very front of your timeline, click on the little stopwatch right here next to transform, and it's going to put a little yellow dot right here at the very, very, very beginning of your clip. Now to make it zoom out, all you have to do is scroll to the very end, and we're going to pan this out manually just to get that zoom out effect that we have. Let's do it a little bit more to make it fully zoom out so we get a really good effect of it. And click the check mark to make that okay. And it's going to create this other transform uh, point right here, a marker that we have. So we can scroll through this and see that it's actually zooming out as the time lapse goes on. And we can go ahead and export that and see what it looks like moving forward. So we're gonna go to File, Export, and we're going to go to Render Video. And it's gonna pull up a dialog box that we have where we can select different options of where we want it to go. So let's just call this Time Lapse TL for short. I'll put it on my desktop. 
So you just select the location where you want it to go. And H.264 is a good rendering size or format, a preset. 1080p is what we had it set to, 1920 by 1080. All that looks really good. And just select render and it will automatically start saving that video out as an MP4 format. All right guys, here's our finished product. If you liked this video or found it helpful, go ahead and hit the subscribe button to learn more about photography and how to shoot.